Hello there, welcome to Heart Explained Therapy. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my philosophy and it's going to sound as if it's probably insanity talking. Now, one of my theories is mental health doesn't exist. Now, lots of people get diagnosed with mental health symptoms every day. Uh, so you would say, how can this be true? Now, what I need to do is break this down to how you can think about this and see that what I'm saying is actually truthful. You see, when you are depressed, there is no doubt that you are having really bad thoughts, you're chemical reactions in your body are causing you a lot of stress and you are almost struck with this mental health condition and it's alive and well inside you. However, another part of the day, the very same day as you have this There'll be a moment where you're clear of thoughts, you're not concerned or thinking about the depression, and your mind is even acting out a alternative picture in your mind. And this takes you away from the depression. One minute you had it, next minute you didn't. Now, when you don't have your mental health, then it doesn't exist. You can't say it's inside waiting to come out. It's, uh, it's waiting to get caught on a door handle and then it will suddenly come out of you. The mental health condition is only part of you when you allow it to be that way. When you accept that you have the power to change your thinking, to do something else other than go into your mental health problem, then this is a place where it doesn't exist. Now, I can hear people say that this is not true for them because they've had it for so long and it's always there and it causes all sorts of other problems and I need to sort of break down to these people on how they can live without their mental health longer than they have to live with it. Um, is it possible to completely get rid of it? I would say it would take a certain set of specific emotional needs being met and new belief systems being formed for you to have a chance of never sort of going back there but it's definitely possible. Now there's a process to coping with mental health and a process to actually being in this place where you realise it doesn't exist. It's not a very difficult process but there's a certain few rules that you have to understand and you have to learn rather than all the things that you already know. At the moment I'm sure that there's probably 95% of the population who gets angered and annoyed about an external event happening. A a failure to get a promotion at work, a bad relationship, a problem with the children at school, a debt that's come through the post unexpectedly, um, the coronavirus trauma, the, the politics of the world. There's so many things that at the moment externally are happening and they affect us mentally and then the mental part of the illness can affect us physically and this is how we work. 
However, this isn't the true way that we are supposed to engage with life. Now, the way to break this down is, do you know sometimes when you handle things really well, when you don't get too stressed and don't go too much into your fear and you just cope with something and you just do it. Uh, and usually you'll find there's other fears and stuff going on that force you to do this. But when this happens, you are instinctively being your true natural self and handling the situation really well. Now, when we have something that really triggers a fear, an emotion inside, uh, uh, something that's usually connected with the past. Um, it drives us to feel uncomfortable, it triggers off emotions in our body that are just saying stay away from this, don't do this, make sure you do this as quick as you can because it's going to drive you mad. And this is the way that we're built up to, to exist on this planet. And it's not technically the right way. The right way to deal with all external things that happen is actually not to get connected to them, is not to be emotionally tied with any external event. Because what this does is allows you to think clearly, react properly, do everything that you need to do based on the correct information in front of you rather than an emotional reaction based on fear which is all that we've ever known how to act and it's very much like an animal and we are just an animal and this psyche part of us is something a lot more which says I control that part of fear I control that part that gets emotional I can control my reactions to bad events. And this is the bit where mental health can't exist. Because there is no world of concepts in this place. You are just on this wave. And the wave is going wherever the wave is going to go. And you're well aware that you can hit something bad that stops you in the tracks or the wind can pick up and take you into an even better wave and you're not needing either scenario uh, completely in control of your ego I would say to the level of you know that you don't need this version to come out to interact for you. You can do it all on yourself because you've got the confidence, you're fearless and you're better when you are like this. Now I'll be giving more tips on how mental health doesn't exist but this is not a thing to get too annoyed about. If you're sitting there now at home with a mental health problem and you're thinking that this is quite nasty for someone to say it doesn't exist when you suffer just believe for one second that I could be telling the truth and this mental health doesn't exist and this can be gone in possibly three to six weeks months days if you do certain things now I think that's not a bad little dream to focus on so I'll be putting videos out there that teach you exactly how to get to this place where you realise that mental health becomes you when you are not in this place of control, which is actually letting go of all sort of control, which is, uh, we'll get to that later on in the videos. But uh, yeah, guys, mental health doesn't exist. I'd been to the place where it doesn't exist and I think it's important that we share that.